In this video, I'll review the Git integration that I've included in my configuration of NeoVim for writing LaTeX documents. So let's open up NeoVim and we'll return to this session. And so let's imagine that we want to begin to track changes on this document, both so that we can revert back to older versions of the document if we want to, but also so that we can track its progress or create different branches if we're going to try out some experimental new direction for the project to go. Then we can then switch back to an older version very easily. Okay, so to begin doing this, we'll go into Git and then lazy Git. And the first thing it's going to tell me is that we don't yet have a repository and I'll ask, do we want to create one? We say yes. And I'm going to leave the default name for the branch, which is master, so I'll do nothing. And so you can see these are all the different files that Git is aware of in our project directory. And some of them I'm going to track, and so I'm going to hit spacebar. Um, but some of them, like this aux file, I don't need to track its changes because it's going to continue to change, and, and the content that is changing is not important to me. And so I'm going to ignore that with I, and I'm going to do the same for the rest of them. And you can notice that git ignore has just appeared. So it basically it created this file, and we can see what's inside of it. These two, um, it's telling git to ignore these files. And so we're going to continue to ignore things, including the PDF, because the PDF is you know, it's not a text document. Uh, it's going to continue to change. Um, it'll bloat our Git repository if we are tracking PDFs. So we're just going to focus on the files that have important content. And so I'll add this. I'll add the glossary. And I'm also going to track Git ignore. Um, it's not as important, but why not? And I'm going to commit this with C, and I'll say init commit. OK. And so now we have this commit has showed up down here. Um, and that's great. So now let's quit out of here with Q. And let's add some new line. So here is a new line. OK, and as soon as we save this, you can see this little green bar over here showing that that's something new. Um, if we add an, an addendum here, so something else, then we're going to get a little blue bar over in the git gutter showing that it's modified. And then if we delete a line, you know, even an empty space, um, it will show up as a little red arrow. So this is helpful, allows us to, um, so say we move this down here, helps us track sort of how many modifications have happened to the file since we've last changed it. Um, we can navigate through these. If we go into Git and we go to next hunk, so J, it'll basically hop to the next hunk, the next change, you know, amount of changed text. So space GJ, space GJ, or we can go up space GK, space GK. Sometimes it's useful if you're at the beginning of the document, you want to go to the next piece that has changed, space GJ, and you're right where you were, at least at the, the highest point in the document that has changed since your last commit. Okay, let's now commit these changes um, to space GG. So we can see, okay, this file has been modified. So we're gonna, um, let's change one other file before we continue. So let's go into to-do. So let's, um, so here's a new bullet. Okay, space GG. Okay, so now we have these two files, they've both changed. Um, we can also see them if we open up the um, tree over here. You can see that there's this little hollow bullet for all these files that are ignored. 
and then we have um, this little yellow dot for the files that um, have been modified. So let's now commit these new changes. So I'm going to stage both these files and I can do it once with by pressing A for all and then C and say update. Okay and now if I go back here you can see that the git gutter is now empty because we're up to date and if we open the explorer that these two files there's no little circles next to them anymore. Okay so that's good and that's that's the basics where you know when you make when you get to a good point in your document or you finish editing a version or you finish writing a new section or even if you've just started a new section you can add new commits and you know you label them so you know what you're doing in that and you build up this whole history that you can return to if you need to so let's say that we want to take the document in a different direction and it's maybe a little experimental and we don't want to take the risk of losing a bunch of work so one thing you do is you can create a commit that's one way to try to save your work but you can also in order just to manage you know your the way you organize the changes that you make to your document you can create a new branch so let's do that so we'll go in here we're going to go here and press N for new branch. Let's call this uh, test. Okay. And so let's say we end up, you know, making a whole bunch of changes. Uh, we drag this down here. Um, maybe we delete all this stuff. Um, and then, I don't know, add a line, say maybe this is a better direction. Okay, so those are a bunch of changes. Um, if I now commit them uh, with C, so made some radical changes. Now we have this commit in here, but if I go back to my old branch, master with spacebar, that commit is absent. And so if I quit out of here, I would have to reload the document um, and go down. Um, we're back to how it was before I made all those changes um, and vice versa. If I want to return, I can just go back to test, check out test. So now we're back on the, the new branch and continue making changes. So let's uh, quit out of here and reopen and go all the way down. Okay, so this is our new direction. Uh, one last change. Okay, let's commit this. Okay, so finished. Uh, test branch. Okay, let's say we now want, we, we like the direction that we've taken things and we want to merge that back into the master. We basically want to take all those changes and make those the official, the official direction that the project has gone. What we can do is go into master, check out master, then go to test and do shift M it says, are you sure you want to merge test into master? So what this is going to do is basically stack all the new changes um, from test onto master. And yes, we do want to do that. And so now you can see we're in master. It's checked out, that little star. And now we have all of these, these new changes that we made, all these new commits. And at this point, test is redundant. If I switch to test, you can see the same commits are in there. So we don't need the test branch anymore. And so I'm gonna delete it. You could leave it around, but if you have a lot of branches, they get sort of cluttered. Um, say as, as soon as you merge a branch in, I typically delete it. So yes, let's delete that. Okay, and so that's a nice thing to be able to do. Um, when I'm thinking about taking a paper in a new direction, I'll often create a new branch. Um, 
if the branches pertain to different sections, uh, you can do it. You can make more than one branch uh, starting from the same point if you like. Um, I try to keep things relatively simple uh, when possible, but uh, but yeah, those are some new options. So the last piece is if you want to push all of these commits up to a remote repository, then we're going to start by going over here. This is my GitHub. I'm going to go into my repositories. I'm going to create new. Let's call it test. OK, I can leave it public for now. Um, and OK, so it's created the repository. We want SSH. I'm going to select this. OK, and so now I'm going to go into control. I'm going to go into the terminal with control T. And let's just check git remote dash V and nothing. There are no remotes so far. So let's do git remote add and origin. And now I'm going to paste in my address. And let's return to check what the remotes are. And sure enough, I have a fetch and a push. So that's what we wanted. So I'm going to close this with control T. And then let's reopen lazy git. And now what I can do is I can push my branches, so master, up to my remote repository with capital P. And so it's asking, do you want to push it to origin master? Yes. And so it's pushing it up. And we see this little check mark. So that's good. And if we reload this page, now we have all the files up here. Here's our test.tech, and that looks pretty good. Um, okay, so now if I want to make some new changes, um, let's say I actually go back to how things were um, and save this. Okay, you can see the git gutter is all full of changes now. And I go space gg. We have this modified file, so I'm going to add it, commit, say, went back to old version. Okay, so now we see this number one, and this says basically that I am one change past where it is saved up on GitHub. And so I'm going to do capital P, and it's going to then push those changes back up. And so if I reload this document, you can see now there's all the old content. Okay, so that's sort of the basics for using Git for just yourself. You can of course also share this repository, you can grant access to other collaborators. Um, and then if they make changes that outpace what you've been up to, then you're gonna have to begin by pulling those down with lowercase p, making changes yourself, and then pushing them up to the repository with uppercase p. So that's sort of the basics. Um, hope that's a helpful overview of some of the Git integration included in this config.